So in this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the inverse of a function from its equation. So remember that inverses are functions that are opposites of each other. So the operations in an inverse function will undo the operations in the original function. And this will make a lot more sense after today's lesson. So remember that f of x equals x squared and y equals the square root of x are inverses because taking the square root of something is the opposite of squaring something. So here's our strategy for today. We're going to undo the operations in an equation using inverse operations to determine the inverse of a function from its equation. So as we work through today's examples, this chart of inverse operations is going to be very helpful to us. Because if we see an operation in our original function, we know how to undo it, right? So for example, if we see an addition in our original problem, we're going to undo it with subtraction. So in general, we're going to go through this chart in this order, following a sort of reverse order of operations. But remember, sometimes depending on the problem, we need to adjust the order a little bit. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to find the inverse from an equation by replacing first f of x with y. Then we're going to switch x and y. And then we're going to solve for y, and this is where we're going to use those inverse operations to isolate y. If the inverse is a function, then we can use inverse function notation to represent it. So here's a little bit closer look at inverse function notation. So we still have our f, but then we have this negative 1 superscript, okay? And that's what tells us we're talking about the inverse. And then we still have our x in parentheses because x is the input. So remember, you can determine whether the inverse is a function using the vertical line test, right? Because if you look at the graph, and if any vertical line passes through the graph more than once, then it's not a function, right? So in a function, any vertical line will only pass through the graph once. Remember that this is another way of looking for repeated x values in the domain. So let's try this example. Let's find the inverse of f of x equals 2x minus 6 and then graph the function and its inverse and identify the domain and range of the function and its inverse. So we're going to start off by finding the inverse. So instead of this f of x, I'm going to write y. So I have y equals 2x minus 6. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out my x and y. So everywhere I see y, I'm going to write x instead. Everywhere I see x, I'm going to write y instead. So now what I need to do is I need to solve for y. Okay, so I need to use my inverse operations in order to get that y by itself. Okay, so I'm going to work my way from the outside in until I get to y. So on the outside, see, I have a minus 6. So the opposite of minus is plus. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Okay, so when I add 6 to both sides, that's going to give me x plus 6 equals 2y. So now I need to get rid of that 2. So remember, anytime there's a 2 like that, remember that's basically like a 2 times y, right? That's what the 2y means. So to undo a multiplication, I need to divide. And remember when I divide, I need to divide every single term in my equation by that number. Well, when I'm dividing x by 2, remember that the coefficient of x is 1. Right? So that's basically like a 1 over 2, which that'll turn into a 1 half x plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then that equals, well, here the 2 and 2 cancel, so I just have y. So this is the inverse that I was looking for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Desmos and I'm going to graph both this original function and the inverse and then see what the graphs look like. Well, notice that um, my original function is a line, right? And then so my inverse is also a line. So I have two linear functions here. So lines are always functions, right? So you can notice any line will pass the vertical line test. So my inverse is also a function. So I can go ahead and write my inverse using inverse function notation, okay? So that's f inverse of x equals 1 half x plus 3. So remember for a line, the domain and range are both going to be all real numbers. So I'm going to have the same domain and range on both my original function and on the inverse. And remember that the inverse of a line is a line. And you can see that this is in fact reflected over the line y equals x. That's why I went ahead and graphed y equals x um, on this grid also. So now let's try finding the inverse of f of x equals 3x. Okay, so same strategy as before. I'm going to start off by replacing f of x with y, so I have y equals 3x. Okay, so now I'm going to switch my x and y, so I have x equals 3y. Okay, now I need to get y by itself. Well, to get y by itself, I need to get rid of this 3, right? It's a 3 times y here, so the opposite is to divide. 
So I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 3. Remember, this x has a coefficient of 1, so I'm just going to turn that into a 1 3rd x equals y. Okay, so now let's go ahead and graph both the original function and the inverse in Desmos. So when we do that, you can see that they're once again both lines. So the inverse is going to be a function, so I'm going to write it using inverse function notation, right? So I have f inverse of x equals 1 3rd x. So you can see that the domain of the original function is negative infinity to positive infinity, and so is the range. Um, the inverse is also a line, so it's going to have all real numbers in the domain and in the range. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So here we're finding the inverse of f of x equals 4x minus 8, right? So we start off replacing f of x with y. Then we switch x and y, and we're going to solve for x. So we first add 8 to both sides, and then we divide everything by 4. So that gives us 1 fourth x plus 2 equals y. So when we graph both of these, once again, they're both lines. Um, and notice that the inverse is a function, so we're going to write it using inverse function notation. So we have f inverse of x equals 1 fourth x plus 2. Um, and the domain and range of both functions are all real numbers. So you can find the inverse of a function from its equation by switching x and y and then solving for y using inverse operations. If the resulting equation is a function, you can use inverse function notation f inverse of x to represent it.